It's the classic trick shot. Two or more arrows at once. Every archer tries it at least once in their life. Sometimes it works surprisingly well. Other times, it falls short. But was it always just a trick shot? Surprisingly, there is evidence that in the past, there were archers that shot multiple arrows, and they did so in real-life combat situations. Where, when, and why would they have done this? In 1519, the conquistador Hernán Cortés landed in Mexico and began the bloody process of subduing the native civilizations. In the aftermath of the conquest, Jerónimo de Mendieta, a Franciscan missionary who was charged with evangelizing the New World, composed a work detailing the history of his order's mission. One detail in particular is striking. He writes that, in the province of Teotihuacan, there had been archers who were so skilled that they could shoot two or three arrows together at one time, and who drew them just as stout and as certain as a fine archer shooting only a single arrow. The illuminated codices recounting the years of Spanish conquest do not offer any explicit detail to corroborate this description, although they do confirm the Indians' prolific use of missile weapons. The accounts of both Mendieta and the Conquistadors are specific to mention that the preferred order of battle was to begin with a salvo of arrows before beginning a face-to-face -face melee with obsidian lances and swords. In this martial environment, shooting multiple arrows with a single discharge may have been an ideal tactic. Two or three arrows at a time would have made good use of the limited time and distance available before switching to melee weapons. It sent more projectiles downrange in less time. It may even have had an effect like a shotgun blast, injuring either multiple foes or offering an increased chance of seriously wounding a single foe. Skeptics are sure to counter that this could not be possible. Two arrows at once would surely fly too slowly. However, in testing, this modern recurve was easily able to propel two 400 grain arrows over 100 yards and potentially much further if overdrawn and if shot with lighter arrows. This is well within the distances that could be expected for contemporary Mesoamerican conflicts. Accuracy was reasonably good by clout shooting standards. Hitting a five foot wide area at 80 to 100 yards was not especially difficult. Sometimes the arrows stayed tightly together. Sometimes they were several feet apart. This could be advantageous either way. On the subject of power, despite the surprisingly good cast, this particular setup is actually relatively inefficient. This bow is far too light by military standards, and the arrows are far too heavy relative to the draw weight. Ballistics formulas can be used to predict arrow weights that would render the ideal kinetic energy. When shot from a reasonably heavy war bow, two light arrows would theoretically leave with sufficient energy for each arrow to be deadly against medium-sized game. The question of penetration at longer ranges against both bare flesh and the types of woven cotton armor in common indigenous use at the time is an issue that will only be resolved with extensive further tests using heavyweight war bows and a variety of arrow weights and points. Although perhaps the Mesoamerican archer's strategy was similar to that of the medieval European archer, 
to land an arrow on the unprotected face and head of his enemy. Whether the method from Teotihuacan of shooting two or three arrows at once was a genuinely effective tactic, or merely harassment meant to demoralize opponents, is something that only experimental archaeology might be able to answer. The certain truth, however, is lost to the past. In the 4th century AD, the Roman Empire became divided and disintegrated into civil war. The legitimate emperor, Constantius, warred against the usurper Magentius, resulting in one of the bloodiest encounters in the history of the empire. Against this backdrop, the historian Zosimus tells us of the feats of one extraordinary archer. He writes that at the Battle of Mersa Major, the archer Menelaus, commander of a group of Armenian cavalry, possessed the art of shooting three arrows from his bow in one discharge, and with them could strike and kill three different persons. Mercenaries from Armenia were indeed hired extensively by the Roman Empire, and they were renowned for their prowess. However, it is best to approach accounts such as this with an abundance of caution. One early English translation differs in describing the battle. Instead using the term throwing darts, suggesting that Menelaus may have actually been using lead-weighted darts, often called plumbadi. However, the translator also uses the word dart to describe the actions of archers as well as that of the Persians, who were well known for their use of the bow. This could be just a case of bad translation. If one consults the original Greek text of Zosimus, one can confirm that Menelaus was indeed the commander of a group of Armenian Ipotoxaton, or horse archers, and that the word for his projectiles was velos, meaning arrow or dart, in the case of Menelaus, specifically toxo velos, an arrow shot from a bow. For some horse archers, such as Menelaus, unleashing multiple arrows with a single shot might not have been as impractical as one might expect. The mounted archer's method of attack was similar throughout history. Charge in unleash a hail of arrows, and then quickly retreat. Hit and run tactics. They had limited time and distance to engage, just like the Mesoamerican Indians. As opposed to shooting single arrows rapidly and repeatedly, loosing multiple lightweight arrows from a powerful bow would have been a strange, seemingly absurd, but logical extreme of their philosophy of combat. It delivered many arrows at once and would have been relatively easy to execute. In that respect, it is the ultimate evolution of rapid shooting. But that is not to say that it is mutually exclusive with rapid shooting. If anything, the two methods complement each other quite well. So, did Menelaus truly almost win the battle single-handedly by shooting clouds of arrows against his foes? Did his scattered shots find the weak spots and gaps in the armor of his adversaries? Or did he merely inflict irritating wounds? After all, he himself was ultimately killed by a man that he had wounded. Whether he or those like him were truly paragons of archery, or just an interesting footnote in history, we will never know for sure. <laughs>